God bless you. I'm Bishop Jerry Maynard, pastor of Cathedral of Praise, and right here in Nashville, Tennessee, 4300 Clarksville Pike. Each Sunday night, we have Sunday Night Live, and we have guests who come on to talk to us about things that are life-enhancing, not only for members of the church, but also for the community, because we do understand that uh, the church is a microcosm of the community, and we are to do things to help and to bless the community. As a matter of fact, Jesus says, go ye into all the world to preach the gospel. And he gave us reasons as to why we should and what would happen as a result of our doing so. So we bring our synergies together and we try to help people the best that we possibly can. And thus we're here tonight with Sunday Night Live to do just that. We've had different guests and all of whom have been very helpful, informative, relative to their areas of discipline and based upon the views uh, and the sharing that we've had, many of you have appreciated and, and enjoyed uh, what we have done. On tonight, we have a very special guest, a person who I met when I first came to Nashville uh, on the Clay Street. She's very much involved, both she and her husband, as well as their children. And a person who has been working in the community for quite some time. As we get into our discussion, she'll tell you more about that. But I am very happy to have her with us uh, as a person of the Lord, a minister in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and a person who not only speaks, but also writes. And she wrote a book that many people are talking about today uh, because she expressed some very personal things uh, as it relates to where we should be in our thought process. And she's going to talk to us, not limited to the book on the epitome of love, but she's going to talk to us about that and other things pertaining there too. I am happy to have tonight a young lady. <laughs> We affectionately call her Mother Patricia Davis. It's good to have you on tonight. It's good to be on, sir. <laughs> yes, it's great. And I, I want you, uh, I gave just a little introduction, but I want you to tell people about Mother Patricia Davis and let them just know who you are. Well, I'm a native of San Antonio, Texas. And I graduated from TSU uh, in a master's degree in guidance and counseling education, art and gallery presentation. And I used all of that to start a business, Citizens for Affordable Housing. And uh, we have been, had been in existence for 34 beautiful years, helping individuals with housing and, and different uh, credit situations and getting government money. And also, we did meet you and I at one of the fundraising banquets, and you have been supportive and helping us uh, with our contributions to the community. And uh, we have received different awards from President Clinton, President Bush, uh, the governor. We've just had so many accolades based on the work that we've done. And of course, in meeting my husband there in school and our marriage and beautiful life and all of the things that we had experienced, we had 42, 48 beautiful years together. And uh, we worked in the community uh, doing all kinds of volunteer work. And now I have been blessed to write this book by inspiration of God and in the epitome of love. And uh, my coach was telling me, he says, you know, this book uh, is related to what's going on now. And many times, uh, Bishop, we hear and we read about things in the Bible, but do we actually bring it off of the printed page? We think about Hezekiah that uh, the prophet told him that he was going to die. And he turned his face to the wall and the Lord gave him 15 more years. You know, that was an intricate part of something that we had to pull out uh, in our lives. The things that we relate to uh, is real. 
And what we're doing, I mean, we it, it's new, and, and Misha teases me, Adrian, and whatever, because I'm looking to move, to go here and there. And I said, I'm not going to be traveling all over the world, you know, trying to push this book. Well, I didn't have to, because I had several beautiful um, book signings, and then this virus thing came up, and now uh, we're going viral, you know, uh, with different things. And the last viral, the Zoom that we did, um, it was Momentum. We were supposed to uh, have a book signing here in Nashville. And so we did a Zoom, and we were blessed to hit several cities and countries. As far as Australia, can you believe that? <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. Well, that is that is excellent. Uh, the book is moving, and yeah. there are things. You know, uh, one of the things that I listen to via the radio as well as television, that uh, the uh, coronavirus uh, has brought people into uh, the house. Um, uh, husbands and wives are rediscovering each other. They've yeah. been apart. Children and parents are rediscovering each other because they all have their own ways and things that they're doing, activities, school, mm -hmm. work, all of these things. But they're all now home in the house together. Mm -hmm. And it's different. They're not going out to eat dinner at restaurants for the most part. Many of them are not. But they're in the house together. I would imagine that there are things in your book that address itself to the epitome of love that can uh, uh, speak to where we are with regard to the confinement that we have uh, with our families. Why don't you talk a little bit about your book and, and, and express yourself in that regard too? Okay, well, what we're looking at is that um, my editor that you know, takes out and putting in and all of this, I had done research on this to make sure that everything that I put in, according to statistics, was correct. And uh, this pulmonary fibrosis, like I said, is, is akin to what is going on now. Uh, persons usually live between maybe one to three years, and they are on a, a oxygen tank. They are crippled, they're in wheelchairs, they can't breathe. Now, is the time for people to read and see how we were able to have the love and God in the center to be able to exist all of the years that my husband lived. And he was given 13 years. Now, what happens is I had to do research on this because I didn't want to you know, say something and then be sued for false advertisement or whatever. This is true. Plus, we have individuals that um, are saying that I have this breathing, I have my children have, con have problems, we have financial problems, I, I think I want to get a divorce. All of this is addressed. And, and you say, well, how can you do that? Because it was our life. We, we ended up sharing uh, problems that we had in finance and, you know, things that could have brought us to divorce. But we sat down with God in the center of everything that we were doing, and he gave us answers. Today, if we're looking at healing, if we're looking at miracles, you'll see it in this book. If we're looking how to take care of our children, how to discipline them, how to work with them, if we're college students, you know, the college students have gotten this book. I said it has helped them in, in their way of thinking because we actually did not know we were living a book. And each person may be living a book. You're living a book. I'm maximizing my potential on the book that you wrote. So when we look at epitome of love, we're actually seeing that there are thousands of cases that fit up under this. And what I have done is for every book that we sell, we give back a donation. And I have joined uh, with this foundation because there are numerous amounts of uh, cures coming in existence. 
I don't know if this one that we have now would be a part of this where a cure is available. But when we look at uh, things that my husband and I did together, we didn't ever find anything hard that we could not go through because we allowed God to be in the center of what we're doing. And when we look at education today, and we, we look at the schools and how they are and the children, you know, can't get out and they can't be Someone wrote to me and said that their children were a part of this. And then couples are getting two books where they can actually, since they're in, be able to read about this, see about what goes on when, when, when the wife is pregnant and she has to stop work. What goes on when the husband says, I don't feel good? Wonder what is my situation? What happens when each one of your children or child or you are diagnosed with something and the doctors give up? We have all of this information in here because with our children, we didn't understand. We just knew God was allowing us to trust him and to believe him. And so in doing this, we're talking about statistics. Watch this. I, I contacted the U.S. Um, Census Bureau and got statistics on uh, divorce and marriage. And you know that 30% of divorces now are in older couples because they are burned out. How do you get burned out in marriages? How do you get burned out because your husband or your wife is ailing and you're there to take care of her? How do you deal with this situation? And so these things are expressed uh, in the book. And we've had college students to uh, read the book. It said it's helped them as far as learning how to read and study and pass tests. And you know how you when you met me and we had the sons down in my office and they were studying during the summer. There are different things that are outlined, but not in one, two, three. It's an easy read book. And we've had many people to say that they sit down and they read the book and they get started. The next thing they know, they have read the book because they couldn't put it down. That's, a, that, that's, that's real good. Different ones, different areas of discipline where they have been helped by reading uh, what you have written and what you have written not only comes from your experiences, but also godly inspiration. And so when we, when we start thinking about that, um, I know that um, uh, your husband, who uh, all of us uh, really did appreciate and love here, Elder Davis, uh, and he was, he was sick. You've been together for, for so many years and you had uh, your three sons. And uh, there came a time when he was sick and you had to be there uh, for him. And of course, I watched you all uh, when you came to church. I watched uh, how you uh, attended uh, to him. He was not uh, coming to church uh, uh, as though he was not able to walk or anything. But uh, you could tell that he was not feeling the best. But you were right there with him with, with the smiles and all the things that you needed to have to let him know that he's still your man. It doesn't make any difference whether you're sick, uh, all those wonderful years we've had and you looked at him as though I'm looking for even greater years. You're sick, but I'm looking for greater years than what we're having. So talk to the people uh, somewhat about that. How do you keep that love going over the years. I mean, you say 48 years, two more years, it would have been 50 years uh, for that golden anniversary. How do you keep that love and that fire burning? Well, really, it's, it's a part of the scripture that says, wife, submit unto the husband, and husband, give his life for the wife. We never let that part. In other words, I can't be excited uh, we continue to do everything that we were doing uh, as far as traveling. Uh, we went back to a lot of places that we had first met and where we had gone. It is a thing of keeping whichever partner it is involved in life, 
not looking like they're getting ready to, you know, go somewhere or whatever and, and not come back or they're getting ready to die, but keeping him happy, feeding him the different things that he liked to eat and going to places, go, you know, where we where we used to go doing picnics. He loved to to uh, farm, but God didn't give him a farm. So we had a, a, a backyard that was second to none. And he planted gardens, you know, just cabbage, greens, all these different things. You never let an individual know your actual feelings. You always give them hope. And the only way you can do that is by the power of God and knowing that his word is true. When uh, we went to, uh, and it's always good for one of the partners to submit because he told me, he says, I've always wanted to go to Jamaica. I said, well, I want to go to Hawaii. So we came to a new agreement, and I said, well, we'll go to Jamaica this year, and next year, I go to Hawaii. But next year did not come for me to go to Hawaii. So we went to Jamaica together. Maybe if I wouldn't have been so, you know, easy going and said, well, I want to go. You know, this is one thing that, that we, we put in the book is that we have to uh, come to an agreement. And so with me saying, okay, we'll go to Jamaica. And we did. We were out there in the water. I mean, we were doing everything. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, mother, mother. You were in the water. Did you have on a swimsuit, mother? You have on a what? What? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I can't let them get it on the media. <laughs> <laughs> but, but are you understanding what I'm saying? We we ourselves uh, come down as far as things that we want to do. We want to make our spouse whether wife or husband or whatever, we want to make them happy. You know, we want to do the things that if it's reminiscing, you know, going here and there, uh, eating certain foods, being with certain people. But when you start pulling them in and leaving them by themselves and, you know, and then people start pulling them away, then, you know, they say, well, why do I have time to, you know, why should I live? The boys were all around, you know, one that doesn't have my you know, he came up and visited and all this. So we don't need individuals now that are looking at circumstances. Okay. Uh, we, we're losing a little bit of your sound. I mean, it's, it's not all the way gone, but it's some of it is not as loud as it was. But anyway, we, we heard some of what you said and we appreciate it. Um, I, I want you, if you will, um, to uh, well, let, let me let me do this. This is this is rather humorous, but nonetheless, I want to bring it up. Uh, you know, you're one of those uh, ladies who is very, 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 very uh, prompt and proper and all of that. And so, uh, and the things that you ask of God, you believe that God gives them, and He does. Uh, but your husband brought something home one day. And I, I would like to know what your reaction was when he, when he brought that old car home. You're... <laughs> I'm telling you, he, 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 he wanted it. You know, I mean, I got the license, I got everything, and then he got in it and drove it. You know, I mean, yeah. he, he, he enjoyed himself, you know. And um, I said, well, it is sort of my car, but I said, we'll share. But I didn't get to share. And <laughs> 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 people would peer in Hendersonville. They would take pictures, you know, and, and that was something that he enjoyed doing. You know? Yeah. He put the spouting at a pond house, and I've been manning all of that. Uh, he was very creative. You know, and so to cut that down and say you can't do this and you can't do that, he was doing everything that he wanted to do, and uh, I had no no problems with that. I was really glad. And seriously, you know, sometimes we get greedy. You know, God has given us a beautiful life. I have no regrets, but 
I was really thinking that maybe you could add a few more years. Uh oh. Well, praise God. Um, I am not sure at this particular point um, uh, where we are, but we'll be right back. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. We are back. And uh, again, we uh, apologize for the technical difficulties, but we're back. And uh, we were right in the midst of uh, this uh, automobile and the old car and all of that. And so, um, Mother Davis, if you can remember uh, where we left off in that car situation, just start right back and we'll move on. Well, I do remember we had an event at the church. And um, I was already there, and my husband got a cowboy outfit. You may have <laughs> And people were screaming and hollering, you know, and taking pictures. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? He was all slow and, you know, leaning and everything. And I looked out there. I said, you brought the car out here? He said, yeah, the car and I doing good. You know, that is something that was in his heart. You know what I'm saying? Well, I could have said, well, you don't need to be driving. You know, you don't need to be doing that. But when our loved ones want certain things, it, it should be there for them. And he enjoyed, you know, he enjoyed the, the, the car and the farming out here. We, we had from cucumbers to watermelon, you name it. And I'm left with all of this. Yeah. Yeah. You need to come out here. I mean, trees that have grown up that were, you know, small or whatever. So my, my thing is, and, and I, I really appreciate people being open, but I've had young married couples um, that have had problems with medical with their husbands, and they said, I read the book, and I did what you told me. You know, when you go to a hospital, you know, you have to understand that you are in place or your loved one, or go to the homes, you're in place for your loved ones because nobody's going to care about your child or your husband or your whatever like you did. So I moved into the hospital. <laughs> okay. So what, what we're looking at is seriously people that would say, I, I, I saw uh, Bishop Mayer in Sunday Night Live, uh, and, and uh, I want to order a book. We're giving a 20% discount on anybody buying uh, Epitome of Love. Some ministers in different places have bought boxes of books. And I asked, I said, you know, what are you doing? They said, well, they have a singles class. Uh, they have a marital class. They have a college class. So you can see that this book, even though it's maybe small in page, it's power because it's what God wants, and he wanted his people to be able to have something positive and, and to increase their faith and cause them to look at something in a different avenue rather than all of the things that are going on around us. So that's what we want to offer, and um, we have told you about pulmonary fibrosis. I do have a, a website. Well, which is www.epitomeoflove.org. I do have um, a a uh, a page that's uh, Facebook, and that was recently put up for me because you know I don't know all of this technical stuff. But uh, the young lady that did that for me, she has a lot of information on there about pulmonary fibrosis because I gave it to her, and so people can uh, you know read that they can see it. They can uh, get a lot of the comments that have been given, and, and that will help them to see that it's not something we just, you know, make it up. But this is real, and God is real. And the things that are happening now uh, are real, and it depends on where our faith lies. Okay. I uh, usually, near the end, I always ask uh, uh, my guests to let people know how they can get or whatever it is that they have or how they can engage themselves in what they're about. But you have already approached that. But I want you to, at this particular time, uh, to just take your time and let the people know uh, how they can get the book uh, through the website you said, uh, in, other, in other means by which they can get the book. 
um, and give them uh, the uh, name of the book. Uh, we've talked about it, but to give them the name of the book again, how they can get the book. And, um, and, and I'm, I'm not sure if you're talking about the cost of it, but whatever you can give to them so that they can get it, we want the people to be blessed by the book. Okay. Well, um, it is $15. And so, you know, if you're taking off 20%, you know what that is, plus we take care of the shipping and the handling. And uh, it was so amazing because, you know, I don't say that this is my book, but it is what God gave me to birth to be able to help people, not knowing that this virus was going to come on at this time. Uh, but at some point, I have given books away. You know, just given them away, signed them, and went on. But people write back and give me more than what the book sold for. So it's always a blessing in doing what God tells you to do. And when we can let go and let God, that's where the miracles come in. That's where the blessings come in. And I cannot say anything without using God in the center because that's been my life. You know, I've been healed. I've been delivered since my husband has been gone. And I've shared testimonies with different ones because all God wants is his people to fill themselves with positive things. Stop looking at, you told us that a while back. Don't look at what you see. How many people have really Get grasp the maximizing your potential. What do I have in me that can explode to be able to help others to become better? Here it is, right here, epitome of love. Why did I name it epitome of love? How did I get it? Came to me by inspiration in the facilities where I was, and I'm thinking, what? What does that mean? That means that we're not the love. But we have patterned after the love. Each one of God's children, we have a certain degree, a degree of Bishop, I bet you have never had this much trouble with we, we're fine. We're fine. Here's what I'd like for you to do. Uh, yes. give, give, give your email address again uh, that you have. Give that again, uh, how they can get the book. That's what I want to know. I know it's on the book, but I want you to give it to them. Give them the email address again, how they can get in touch with you so they can uh, get the book. Okay. My email is pdavis at epitomeoflove.org. And then, of course, my website where you can find out other uh, different things that we do in the community, how many uh, different classes that we have. We have classes for singles and uh, for married couples. Um, you know, all of this is on uh, my web, which is still epitomeoflove.org. Or you say, I don't have any of that. Then you can write to my P.O. box, which is 791, and that is Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37077. And remember, if you say that you have heard us on Sunday Night Live, we'll get a 20% discount for purchasing the book. Okay. Do you have a cash app? Yes. I have cash app. Uh, I have uh, oh, the square. You know why I'm hesitating because my coach, and you know who my coach is, he's gotten me with all of this. So, yes, uh, we have all means for them to pay by. Okay. I just want I just want to make sure that people are able to reach you, able to get the book uh, and, and enjoy the book, as so many of us have enjoyed uh, since we've read it. And we want the people to know that uh, t tonight, Sunday Night Live, we have been talking to Mother Patricia Davis. She has given us some insight on things and how you can keep your marriages together, make them wholesome, make them uh, loving, and uh, always remember that uh, your spouse 
uh, is to be uh, happy. Uh, they have the joy, but you can bring them happiness. And, and so we appreciate you being on with us and we've enjoyed every moment of it tonight. We did have some technical difficulties, but that happens and we're not concerned as to the why of it as much as we're concerned about what we did enjoy uh, in bringing forth on tonight. It was a great night and I appreciate you very much. To those of you who are watching, I want you to know that we appreciate you watching Sunday Night Live. Uh, we believe this, that through technology, uh, through virtual presence, that we are able to communicate with you. We may not be in the same place where you are, but one thing is for certain, through our virtual presence, we are where you are.